We're leaving Adelaide to fly to Cairns and from there to travel north to Iron Range National Park on Cape York Peninsula, a very significant birding destination with species found nowhere else in Australia. We have a day in Cairns before heading further north, so it's straight down to the Esplanade. The numbers of waders have decreased since our last visit, but to get such close views of various knots, godwits and sandpipers is always a treat. Feeding in the grass are the very confiding peaceful doves and scaly-breasted munia. Looking up, the noisy singing announces a varied honey-eater, enjoying the fruit. A pair of Teresian imperial pigeons and a colourful male fig bird. Nearby are the beautiful centenary lakes with striated heron feeding and the black butcher bird the largest of the butcher birds. A delightful family of Rajah shell duck is making its way to the water. Good to see them breeding here. Butterflies are plentiful and so are bush stone curlews, trying to stay immobile and unobserved while we're observed by the beady red eye of a spangled drongo. In flight, a magnificent aerial acrobat as it catches insects. Plenty of other birds around too. Back to the car and a short drive takes us to Katana wetlands and the hide overlooking a lake. Look at the spread of those feet on the water lily specialist, comb crested jacana, searching for insects among the lily pads. Green pygmy geese also like deep permanent freshwater lakes. Next morning, we're heading north with Chuck Crawford and our friends Karen and John, also king birders. Our first stop is Lake Mitchell, where some skulking gets great closer to much less common cotton pygmy geese. The female is muted in colouring, but the male stands out with its chalky white head, neck and chest. Whoops, the skulker has been seen. In Mount Malloy, we get close views of squatter pigeon, the northern race with red orbital skin. A lone brown quail also gives an unusually close view. Heading north up the Peninsula Development Road into drier country towards Lakefield National Park. A lunch stop at Palmerston River Roadhouse gives us a typical close huddle of apostle birds, a noisy gregarious species which are mostly ground foragers. The largest bowerbird, great bowerbird, rather plain and grey when not raising its mauve pink crest, and its bower, flat on the ground, displaying white and green ornaments. Black back butcher bird? No, a pied. On the road again, and into Lakefield National Park, where we see tall, elegant cranes, brolgers, distinguished from Sarah's cranes by their dark dewlap, dark grey legs and red head markings, which do not extend down the neck. Not so far from the coast as the eagle flies, white-bellied sea eagle. We've stopped at a billabong for my favourite sort of bird watching, birds coming in to drink. It's a rare opportunity for close observation of tiny birds like finches. And here are black-throated finches with banded honey eaters. Now we've spotted the finch we particularly wanted to see, the endangered white-bellied race of crimson finch found only on the peninsula. Here's a female next to a brown-backed honey eater and the beautiful male with his clearly discreet white belly. It's exciting to see this race at last. Previously, we've seen only the Southern Queensland and Northern Territory race with a black belly, like this male we filmed on Townsville Common. We've stopped on this dry savannah as we can hear the calls of red-tailed black cockatoos. They've been feeding on the ground and some rise up majestically on deep, slow wing beats. 
the males with bright scarlet tail feathers and the females more orange on the tails and with barring, a wonderful sight. Here comes a family of the other Australian crane, Cirrus crane, with red marking extending down the neck, no dewlap and pink legs. These stately birds are less widespread than brogas, being restricted to the tropical north. Another lover of dry country, near water sources, Australian Pratton Coal in breeding plumage. We spot the imposing dignified bird of the open inland plains, Australian Bustard, which can reach 1.2 metres in height. At Lake Low there's a flock of magpie geese. These differ from most water birds by having strongly clawed, only partially webbed feet. They also sport a characteristic knob on their crown, which increases in size as the bird ages. They can often be found in huge flocks. We're calling in at Lotus Bird Lodge, empty of guests at present in the off-season. There are gull-billed terns on the edge of the fairly dry lake. And then excitement as we spot a snipe, which Chook says from its flight pattern at takeoff may be a swinhose snipe. Butcher bird with white throat, black back butcher bird in Australia found only on the Cape. Only 23 kilometres to Musgrave Roadhouse. Watch out emus! Behind the Roadhouse is Saltwater Creek with Saltwater Croc, Great Egret, Nankeen Night Heron, and watching from above the kookaburra of Northern Australia, blue-winged kookaburra, along with male eastern coal. Next morning we're up with the sun and driving to Artemis Station, a cattle property owned by Sue and Tom Shepherd, winners of a conservation award for their management of golden-shouldered parrot habitat. Sue takes us down to the dam. First a white rump double bar finches, olive-backed oriole chased away by little friar bird, then a noisy gathering of rainbow lorikeets, northern race. In come the northern white-eared race of mast finch. For comparison, here is the plainer northern territory race. An agile wallaby brings her joey in to drink. Wow, here's what we've been waiting for golden-shouldered parrot, an endangered endemic. He's considering coming in for a drink. And here are more, edging cautiously to the water, the females with more muted colouring. Oh, a juvenile pallid cuckoo has scared them off. But here they come again, the males in spectacular colours of turquoise yellow with salmon red belly and the distinctive golden shoulder flashes. These threatened birds breed in termite mounds in symbiosis with moths, which clean the nest litter. They have a restricted habitat of tropical savanna grassland, which has been largely cleared and is susceptible to wildfires. Sioux practices control burning to counteract this, and our thanks are well deserved. Then it's back on the road to a site where the red goshawk, Australia's rarest raptor, has been seen nesting but despite a thorough search, we don't sight it. However, on a previous trip to Musgrave in the breeding season, we had great views of this rare rufous hawk of the tropics. We've driven further into Lakefield National Park, passing termite mounds to a billabong, where we're waiting for finches to arrive. Here they come mainly black-throated finch with a scattering of olive-green starfinch, the adult males showing their bright scarlet faces. A delightful sight. Back along the track and we've seen a strutting bustard. 
It's a male with a large sack in front, which it inflates in breeding display, producing a loud booming, a most impressive bird. Back on the Peninsula Development Road, with 300 kilometres of dirt road to go to Iron Range National Park, which protects the largest area of lowland rainforest in Australia. We pass the Archer River Roadhouse and stop at Wenlock River for lunch. This proves fruitful for birding. A channel-billed cuckoo is perched near us and a female cicada bird is busily devouring a lunch of hairy caterpillar, a bird more often heard than seen. Then it's on to the Pasco River, where we explore an area of gallery rainforest. We've heard a very distinctive call. It's a bird of paradise. This trumpeting display call can only be the trumpet manacode, in Australia found only in high canopy in the Cape York rainforest. It has a much shorter tail than the other three Australian birds of paradise. Wow! That's the loud whistling call of the magnificent rifle bird, the largest and most striking of Australia's rifle birds. It's found only in the rainforests of Cape York and New Guinea. There are wispy plumes from the rear flanks and when it turns, it shows the true glory of its large iridescent display shield. It's practicing on a display perch for when a female is present. Heading north again, we're approaching Lockhart River and we cross over a bridge built by American military engineers in World War II. We're passing through open eucalyptus forest, which is the habitat of another Cape York endemic, White Street Honey Eater, an active forager in lower flowering foliage. And at last, we're turning off to our accommodation, Iron Range Cabins, adjacent to Lockhart River Airport. Next morning, we're looking for fawn-breasted bowerbird and find its bower, an avenue construction on a platform which it decorates with fresh bits of greenery. Unfortunately, the bird is not present. But here is a bird found in Australia only on the peninsula, the striking frill-necked monarch. It behaves like a tree creeper, moving up and down the trunks, gleaning insects. We're driving down Portland Road into the heart of the Iron Range National Park, the only place in Australia to see a Clectus parrot. And a female has just appeared in a nesting hollow at least 20 metres up a huge tree. The bright green male is a striking display of sexual dimorphism. Nearby is yellow-billed kingfisher, another bird you won't see anywhere else in Australia. This is a female with a black cap. Most of our bird watching is done walking along Portland Road, where we found tawny-breasted honeyeater, yet another Cape York speciality, which uses high and mid-level rainforest to hunt for insects and fruits. And he is one of the most charismatic little birds of the Cape, white-faced robin, the counterpart of pale yellow robin of the wet tropics further south. What a cutie. Now we're heading towards the coast to the village of Portland Roads, which was the original port in World War II. Parading on the tiny beach is common sandpiper. It's a beautiful spot where we enjoy a delicious meal at the aptly named Out of the Blue. Next morning, we're driving to Mango Farm Dam, where we see spotted whistling duck, the only whistling duck without side plumes. This species seems to be moving further south. Next stop is the perennial favourite of birders, the sewerage ponds, with some old favourites and some very active glossy ibis. Then back down Portland Road to an iconic birding spot, Cook's Hut Camping Ground, deserted at this time of year. 
there's a black butcher bird on its nest. Flicking about low in thicker vegetation is a female lovely fairy wren, so well named. Hopefully we'll get to see the equally lovely male. We're exploring the old Cohen track and catch a glimpse of a very difficult to see bird which stays up high. Yellow-legged flycatcher found only on the Cape and in New Guinea. Nearby is white-eared monarch and on the ground brush turkey. The peninsula race with the purplish collar. Contrasting with a southern yellow collared race filmed in Cairns. We've returned to the Cohen track early next morning to find to our delight the handsome northern scrub robin, a ground feeder which is a true peninsula endemic, having been split from the Papuan scrub robin. The distinctive vertical black line through its eye on a white face, white wing bars on the black folded wings and rusty upper parts make an effective, disruptive pattern which is perfect camouflage as it forages in dense leaf litter. The cameras are out in force for this wonderful view of a pair of Australia's largest cockatoos, palm cockatoo. It's essentially a New Guinea species which occurs around forest edges on Cape York. The male is the bigger bird with a larger red facial skin patch. Both have magnificent erectile crests and huge beaks. They fashion thick sticks from the branches, grip them with their feet and drum on tree hollows. A curious behaviour which is yet to be explained. They nest in vertical hollows in very large old growth trees and are fussy nesters with a worryingly low reproductive rate. But this pair seems likely to give it a go. Trying for signals from the outside world before our return trip. A special thanks to Chuck Crawford and our friends Karen and John for a wonderful trip. It's January 2016 and we're in Cairns again with our friend Peter, another keen birder, to try for red-bellied pitta, a migratory species from New Guinea that's present only in summer. We're flying up to Iron Range this time. The roads are closed at this time of year and we're staying in Portland House at Portland Roads. Let's look at the garden birds. rose crowned fruit dove, what a beauty. There's the call of the noisy pitter. It must be up on the steep slope behind our accommodation. Also in the garden are hornbill friar bird and olive-backed sunbird. This female is flying up like a hummingbird. This is the male with the iridescent blue throat. The red-bellied pitter is calling. Great! Nearby is large bill Jerigony. Here's its pendant nest. No success with locating the pitta, so we're heading into Iron Range National Park. Peter has seen a frill necked lizard run across the road. Here's that sweet little robin again with its clown face. And further along, a female shining flycatcher. The pit is calling here too. The shining flycatcher likes to be near water and there's certainly plenty of that at the moment. The female eclectus is again regarding us from her great height, but it's started to bucket now, so we have to retreat to Portland House. The storm front has brought in frigate birds circling over the sea. When it rains, may as well look for frogs. And these are huge, the largest tree frogs in the world and surely among the noisiest. The rain has almost stopped and here's a brush cuckoo. And high up as usual, not an easy bird to locate, male red-cheeked parrot. Returning to our accommodation, a noisy pitter has appeared, giving great views from our balcony. Oh, we can also hear red-bellied pitter 
calling from further up the hill. But scrambling up a muddy slope is no way to approach Pitters, so we give up and return to the rainforest for a final look around. We're at Gordon Creek. Now we've spotted a jerigony like bird foraging in the leaves. It has green back and white eye ring. Yes, it's a green-backed honey eater, another Cape York speciality. Is this monarch the one we've been searching for? No, spectacled monarch. But this one could be. Black face, black tail, black wings. Yes, black winged monarch. We've missed red-bellied pitta, but this is a great final bird for Iron Range. It's January, so on returning to Cairns, we head up to Gelatin to look for breeding buff-breasted Paradise Kingfisher. Here's a termite mound with a hole. They arrive from New Guinea around November and begin breeding after the first wet season rains. And sure enough, here's one cautiously approaching its nest. It emerges after 10 minutes to find more food for its young. A beautiful way to end our trip. It's December 2018 and we're back in Cape York for another try for the elusive red-bellied pitta. This time we're flying to Bamaga at the tip of the peninsula and staying at Seisha Holiday Park. Deserted at this time of year, the start of the wet season. The roads south are closed. We're right on the coast of the Gulf of Carpentaria, overlooking the Torres Strait Islands. A white morph reef egret in front of our cabin. Overnight, the threatening cyclone blew south and we got its aftermath, which has brought in frigate birds circling overhead. Straight away, we're off down the airport road, through Bamagar, to sparse, scrubby habitat. The first bird we see is white-browed robin. Then white streaked honey eater. This bird has a very limited distribution, a true Cape York endemic. In a small patch of rainforest, we've spotted trumpet manacode, showing its rounded wings as it flies off. Then it's up the road to Lockerbie Scrub, 230 square kilometres of lowland rainforest, eucalypt tall open forest and closed eucalypt woodland. This will be our main birding area and here's Tawny Breasted Honey Eater. Bird that's hard to miss is the dazzlingly bright yellow breasted boatbill with its unusually broad flat bill. It favours tropical and subtropical areas at all altitudes. A golden orb spider has spun its web across the track. Favouring bare branched trees are flocks of metallic starlings with black iridescent adults and striped juveniles. Here's the paradise kingfisher, newly arrived from New Guinea and still sorting out its territory. Back at our accommodation, we can hear the characteristic tropical sound of yellow oriole calling incessantly. Also enjoying the fruits are a pair of fig birds, striped brown female and bright yellow male. Here's the contrasting southern race with grey breast filmed at Townsville. Near the beach, white-breasted wood swallow are feeding their young. Trying to sleep undisturbed is this Papuan frogmouth, largest of the Australian frogmouths, with a massive bill and red eyes which it wants to shut. Better leave it alone. Just beside our cabin is a male fairy jerigony, a pretty active little forager in the lower branches. Time for dinner. Night spotlighting finds marbled frog mouth, smaller than Papuan with orange eyes. Next morning we visit Bamaga sewerage ponds to find a life and death struggle going on. An egret has been snatched by a two metre water python and is gradually being crushed to death if it's not already drowned. 
sometimes thought of as the original rainbow serpent, the python's grey upper scales glow iridescent colours in the sunlight, contrasting with its golden underbelly. Some spotted whistling ducks nearby seem unperturbed, until they spot us. Next morning, we take a boat across Endeavour Strait to uninhabited Lesser Woody Island. It's a favourite breeding place for Teresian Imperial Pigeon. We also see Yellow White Eye. Crossing to the larger Greater Woody Island, we explore the mangroves. They're the favoured habitat of red-headed honeyeater. Further in is a very confiding mangrove robin. We emerge unbitten from these mangroves, a first. A female mangrove golden whistler gives brief views. Back on land, we drive to the boat ramp at Jackie Jackie Creek, stopping to look at a tragic wrecked DC-3. Looking up, we see lemon-bellied flycatcher. Perched at the boat ramp and calling is collared kingfisher and a female red-headed honeyeater. We visit some private property to see fawn-breasted bowerbird. Here's its avenue bower. And here's the builder, practicing his varied repertoire of calls for the great moment when a female should arrive. Also calling is a striking male frill-necked monarch. Next morning, it's back to Lockerbie Scrub. We've sighted a lovely fairy wren male, just as lovely as the female. Further along, a female shining flycatcher sitting on a beautifully constructed low nest. Then the male, sexually dimorphic as a clectus parrot. But we've heard the call of red-bellied pitta, and in we go, following Rob, as quietly as possible, with mounting excitement. Then, still quiet and alert. Red-bellied pitta. What a moment! Back together in the same frame, Greg. She's still bound. Yep, it was that good. Alan has located a magnificent rifle bird display perch and we see that glorious iridescent blue chest shield in the sun. On a branch across the road sits a male, yellow-billed kingfisher and joining him, the female with the black cap, maybe searching for a nest spot. But the siren call of red-bellied pitta has again led us into the forest and we wait eagerly under Rob's directions. Beautiful views of our most wanted bird and satisfaction all round. Let's cap it off with a glass of wine overlooking the straits and a wonderful meal prepared by Ivor. A fabulous trip with Doug Rob and a great bunch of multi-talented birders.